How many of you guys were familiar with a Rubik's Cube yep. before Carson and Sasha? So two, three, okay. Um, when Carson and Sasha brought their Rubik's Cube over, what did you guys think? It is incredibly difficult. So we twist it so that the oranges align. It was not accessible before. You know, since we can't use our eyes, we have to concentrate what, on what we hear. Vancouver iTech. Vancouver iTech, and you're at Sky, Skyview. Skyview. You solved a Rubik's Cube in 13 seconds. Yes. He's much better at it, though. <laughs> you can't be that much better. There's only 12 seconds better. <laughs> to, so what is your fastest time for My a Rubik's Cube? My fastest time is 10.83 seconds. How did you make the transition to creating a Rubik's Cube for somebody who's visually impaired? Um, well, the idea kind of started with my dad, actually. Um, my dad works at the um, Vancouver VA with blind veterans. Oh, it's at the bottom. So um, that was kind of our in. We thought, how can we take this and um, give it to um, a certain group of people that wouldn't have had the opportunities to solve them otherwise? And then my dad also knowing how to read Braille and having different um, tactile uh, textures that we can use, that was kind of what inspired us to do it. Have you solved the one that Carson and Sasha sent over? No. You've solved two layers? Yeah. How'd that make you feel? Um, somewhat productive, but I would like to solve the third layer. Turn the cubes to see if they match. It's so hard to figure it out. <laughs> For me, it is a fun challenge because I like things that are hard. Like, I want to be competitive. Oh, man. Some say. It's the most challenging puzzle ever. <laughs> now, Carson and Sasha said they've called a couple patent lawyers, but have yet to receive any calls back. So, if you're a lawyer out there and you want to help some fantastic young students, I would suggest reaching out quickly because I think this idea has some real potential. No question. Agent yeah. Joey Harrington. There you go, exactly. <laughs> hey, you know, not to downplay what they've accomplished, but some might wonder why they didn't use Braille on the surface I, of the square. I, I asked the same question. So look, if you're solving a Rubik's Cube and you take those raised bumps of Braille from the top to the bottom, they would read differently on either side. Oh. So they, in order to make everything consistent, they decided to use textures instead of the actual Braille alphabet. It was, again, another genius Brilliant. thought. Brilliant, yeah. yeah. All right, Joey, thank you.